bosom, cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city she utters her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scoffers delight, and the scoffing fools hate knowledge. Turn you into my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and you refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But you said it not all my counsel. And with none of my reproof, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when stress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Powerful words from Solomon. Wisdom does cry forth her voice in the discourse of life, even in the marketplace and through music that surrounds us, not knowing. And many times if you can't hear God directly, he'll talk to you indirectly, through the wisdom and knowledge that speaks to you around you. One of these songs came out some years ago by Crosby Stills, Nash and Young, called Teach Your Children Well. Let me now share with you what the Spirit says to this song. To the saving of our household, part two. Teach your children well. Let me read to you quickly those words to that song. You who are on the road must have a code that you can live by. So become yourself because the past is just a goodbye. Teach your children well. Their father's hell did slowly go by. And feed them on your dreams. The one that they picks. The one you'll know by. Don't you ever ask them why. If they told you, you would cry. So just look at them and sigh. And know they love you. And you of tender years. Can't know the fears that your elders grew by. And so please help them with your youth. They seek the truth because before they can die. Teach your parents well. Your children's hell will slowly go by. And feed them on your dreams, the ones they pick, the ones you'll know by. Don't you ever ask them why. If they told you, you would cry. Just look at them and sigh. I know they love you. Powerful song. First off, let me say, I don't know Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, personally. I don't know who or why they wrote this song, but all I know it's haunted me for years. And I asked the Lord one day, what does this mean? Why does it, why does it haunt me? And he began to expound upon this, taking these secular words of a song and put spiritual truth to their an application to my own personal life and hopefully to your life. So the first stanza was, you who are on the road must have a code that you can live by. Now I have a whole series of videos called The Narrow Road, that addresses this being on this road, called in scripture the broad road. This narrow road that the Lord offers cuts between this broad road. Thus you discover left and right of this narrow road, the secular view of life called the left or secular on the other side, you see what's called the right, or religious. I've come to see that we don't want to join either side of this broad road because both constitute the broad road that leads to destruction. 
I was instructed for a long time to stay on the narrow road. I believe it's 17 videos. In the last video of that series, I was told to leave the narrow road and get above it all. Uh, I explained in that video the reason why I was told this. I won't do that here. So with that said, let me continue with the haunting words of this song. It mentions that we have must have a code that you can live by. Now he asks this question, where do you get this code? Left of this narrow road, secular opinions, or right of this narrow road, religious opinions, which will vary as the denomination, or cult. To make a long story I, short, I discovered that this code must come from above this whole road that this narrow road leads to, that above. That's where it leads you to, to get above it all. Think with me. What constitutes a matter right or wrong? To apply something is right or wrong, you must have an absolute above both. Just reflect on this for now. Let me now continue. See, I didn't go in to expound because it comes out in my other videos. You throw out an absolute. God is the absolute. He determines right from wrong, not us. That's why they were forbidden to go to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man trying to pick man's idea of right and wrong will always end up distorting it to the point where we got today where right becomes wrong and wrong becomes right. Only God can determine that. And there's a way of getting to know that is through the mind of Christ that's in you, which my surge brings out. So let me continue. We could have brought up we could have been brought up in an environment to which he either had no code to live by, you know, hedonistic, or a code totally leaving out this third party above right or wrong. They would be no better off than those with no code to live by. If we throw out any input from God, we'll have a distorted view of God. No matter what code you would adopt, would be wrong. Though it might appear to be right, and the end would prove to be the ways of death. Scriptures warns us about this. In Proverbs 14:12, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the ends thereof are the ways of death. The code we are called to live by, which in my video series called The Mind of Christ, would reveal this fact to you, and you would not have to spend a lifetime to find out the hard way. I've done that. So ask yourself, do you want to let whatever code you have been following go and be willing to discover this code above it all, this mind of Christ? said to be in you. That's the challenge. If you don't understand that, I have a whole series of videos called The Mind of Christ, Christ in You. Listen to those videos, you'll come to understand that. And then you will hear from him. You won't need to hear from me or anyone. This mind of Christ in you will come directly from your Father and he will teach you. Any tutor leader that leads you should be leading you to this the mind of Christ in you, not them. Let me now continue on with his haunting words of this song. And so because become yourself because the part past is just a goodbye. Become yourself. Become yourself. I asked this up people say that. Now there's a new age idea, therefore I'm not talking about that. Becoming yourself. In order to Fulfill a commandment to submit yourself, therefore, unto God. To gain this code I have mentioned about the mind of Christ, you must develop a self. Scripture calls it an ego. Now, in some environments, a child never gets this opportunity to develop an ego because of a dominant parent or some teacher, leader, or God cuts them down and dominates them all their lives. Cults do this a lot. End up with a minus group of blind sheep followers. So some households, organizations like some churches, some governments put this trip on their people. We have all seen this. And some of you have experienced this firsthand. So much so that I don't 
feel a need to stress this point any further, let me move on to more of the haunting words of this song. He passes just a goodbye. We read in scriptures, Philippians 3.13, Brethren, I, would, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto things which are before. Paul admits, and along with myself, I hope for you too, that I have fully come to comprehend all that I share in my videos. But this I do know, that we can't just sit and drown in our self-pity discovering what this video may attempt to get you to see. Its purpose is to get you to, to forget those things which are behind and to reach forth unto things which are before. As I've said, things above this broad road to which this narrow road is leading you to. Now the question is, how do I forget and forgive those who suppressed me, suppressed me, done me dirt all my life, murdering this inward child, never allowing it to become myself. The only answer is found in one who had been touched with all that concerns us. One who clearly says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Many, including myself, had no idea how we were at one time destroying one another fighting and devouring one another, as Paul warned the Galatians, and thinking we were justified in doing this because of the injustice dealt out to us. The getting even, rending evil for evil, only increases it more. Somewhere, possibly beyond the third or fourth generation of doing this, someone wakes up to what is happening and screams out, enough is enough, and ends this cycle of iniquity and it's said to visit to the third or fourth generation. It could go that long. So the question he presents in this first video, this one now, how do we save our household? You just heard it. Father, forgive us. Forgive us. For we have no idea what we were doing. Yet yeah, now that you know what you were doing, you could stick with your bonds of iniquity and remain in your gall, bitterness, and self-pity, thinking this would get you the attention you've been so longed for, hoping that parents who themselves were victims might change and finally give you the love you were deprived of in that environment that felt more like hell than them. You could do this when you could reach higher for love unconditional. I truly is the only love that could rescue you and your household. I had to learn this the hard way. Let me now move on. To, let me show, oh God, forgive us. Let me now move on to more of what this haunting song reveals to us. Teach your children well. Their father's hell that slowly go by. Ask yourself, how well do you know your natural parents, your mother and your dad? Have you dared to ask them the song warns you, don't you, don't you ever ask them, don't you ever ask them why, if they told you, you would cry. So just look at them and sigh, and know that they love me. The latter part of my dad's life, after we went through some hell in my family, I got to know him. Night after night after night for hours, Three years before his heart attack and his death, I got to know my dad. After all these years, he got to know me as his son. Sometimes it takes stuff like that. Now, I could go into here. This is on YouTube. I, I used to share this stuff over you know, one on one, privately, to emails or over the phone. I don't want to get into my personal family matters. But I have been touched, as all of you have been touched by family members good and bad have learned the hard way and you I watch families break up I watch families go to divorce I myself went to a divorce and try to warn my own family about that and they ended up every one of them and either they went to a divorce or their children's children went to a divorce and I could have warned them yet I was the black sheep of the family because I went to a divorce the first one 
and I learned from that. I could have warned him. If you dare to ask them why, you might discover how they were victims of the same treatment that you have dealt out have dealt out to you. Their family code. The silence. No one shares nothing. Many times developed independent from a loving God or some distortion of this God. It would only be after this that you could, as the song says, so just look at them and sigh and know they loved you. My dad, in his own strange way, and my mother, in her own strange way, the only way that they were taught, they did love you as messed up as it was. They wouldn't know. If asked, do you love me, Mom, Dad? They would say that they do. You not know, having received real love themselves could only give you what they were given apart from knowing what the love of God really was. Now, if you really could listen to them, you might hear their dreams which never came into play and you get to pick one you'll know by. So parents, you can feed your children on your dream. Just let them pick one. You'll know through them that you could have had that dream. Why didn't you pursue it? And feed them on your dreams, the ones they pick, the ones you know by. The final word of this song throws the ball into the quarter of the children. The opportunity to teach your parents things they were never taught. Doing this without judging them, but understanding them and their hell which could have been your hell slowly going by. You of tender years can't know the fears that your elders grew by. You, before asking, in tender years of youth could not have any idea of the fears that your parents face, which blocked their dreams, that would soon visit you in your adolescence if you allow them. Fears that could have taught them to reach for a true love that would cast out fear or to give in to their fears and be just another victim passing it on to their children. Though with this understanding, please help them with your youth. They seek the truth before they can die. Know this, that you could be an example of that truth they once saw and now hope that you might find it. So children, teach your parents well. Succeed where they might have failed to the saving of your household. God bless you.